Puffy was going up the stairs and he said, I don't care if Tupac died, I don't care if Biggie gotta die, and I don't care if Shug gotta go to prison for the rest of his life. We got a confession letter on how everything went down and who's responsible. Now, getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty, killed in the line of duty. Tonight, shocking allegations against the city's top cop. Former detective Russell Poole has filed suit against the department. Poole says he uncovered dirty cops while investigating the murders of rappers Biggie Smalls and Tupac Shakur. I provided the chief with enough uh, information and evidence that would warrant a full uh, probe. And at that meeting, I was ordered not to uh, investigate any. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reggie was good friends, and Perez and Sarita and Reggie was great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. Okay, everybody. I thought I would honor this day. I'm making this video to honor Detective Russell Poole. He passed away in 2015 on this day. On 8-22 of 2015, I wrote an article and it was entitled, Russell Poole is an American Hero. And that appeared in a few places along the web. And I'd just like to read it to you. Today, as I reflect on the events of the last couple of days, I get a chance to put it all into perspective without emotions clouding my judgment or being manipulated by information being released through various media outlets or on YouTube. Russell always had doing what is right as his priority. He had the truth as his sword and justice as his shield. Russell Poole was a dear friend. He was a no nonsense he was a no nonsense cop that bled blue. He respected police and the role of the homicide investigator in bringing perpetrators of crimes to justice. For 19 years, he worked for the Los Angeles Police Department as a dedicated member of a well-respected team. He did everything he could to maintain the integrity of that team. When the leadership of, of that team placed a greater emphasis on shielding criminals than investigating them, Russell Poole tendered his resignation. Russell and I made a pact that we were not going to tell anyone about the meeting with the Sheriff's Department. The investigator called Russell the day before the meeting to generally get an idea of what would be talked about and to confirm the meeting. We were starting to get traction in the case. Russell and I had several social meetings with Dave Demersion from the DA's office about the case, choosing to meet over a beer rather than cause a stir by Russell's visit to the DA's office. We had given Dave a copy of Tupac 187, and he was unenthusiastic about the idea of reopening the case. When, us, when Russell and I compiled the Tupac murder facts, he started to show genuine interest. Russ, I need an investigator from inside law enforcement to move this forward on this case. Both Russell and I have been in contact with Sheriff Jim McDonald about the case, and we began with a conference call. Jim had recently taken over the department and was buried, just getting the land. The land. He became unresponsive to either of Russell or my text messages or vo voice messages simply because he was being pulled in so many different directions. Leadership LA was hosting an event where McDonald would be the guest speaker. So as an alumni, I attended 
and, a co- and cornered McDonnell and told him that we needed someone from inside of the sheriff's department to work with the DA's office. Jim reluctantly agreed to get us an investigator and then scurried off to a meeting with Vice President Biden. I followed up with his executive aide, Lieutenant Kerry Carter, with an email that included both of our emails and telephone numbers. They called Russell to schedule a meeting for August 19th, 2015 at 10 a.m. Russell was asked to come alone. And just as an aside, he was asked to come alone only once we found out about uh, the evidence in the one-out shooting. But back to the article. At 9.02 a.m., Russell called me and we talked for seven minutes. He told me he was stuck in traffic around Diamond Bar. On the phone, he told me that he'd be staying at his son's condo to visit the doctor on Thursday. He was going to have his blood pressure medicine adjusted. We talked about the upcoming meeting, and he promised to call me the minute he got out of the meeting. He said, if anything happens to me, you have to get the information we compiled out there. Noon rolled around. And I assumed he was extending this into lunch, but was encouraged that it was taking longer than anticipated. I even thought that maybe he was being offered a job with the sheriff's department. At 3.51 p.m., I sent another text message, still going. A while later, I sent, damn. And then a little while later, must be a great meeting. I had no idea what was actually happening. At 5.28 p.m., I got a text from one of our confidential informants telling me I just heard Russell has died. What the fuck? I went on to Google and saw the news and that it had been posted 24 minutes earlier. I was devastated. The friend I was with started to scour the web while I made some telephone calls. Six minutes later, I was listening to Reggie Wright Jr.'s interview on Bomb First. Now the questions were racing in my mind. How did Wright get a video posted so quickly? It was a 13 minute, 32 second interview. So walk that back. It had to take some time to call it in, to put the background up, to publish it, to post it, and for the aggregate into search engines. For a time, it was appearing in the first couple listings on Google. We clicked on the video to listen to it a second time, and the video had all of a sudden become private and couldn't be played. Did Wright know Poole wasn't going to be walking out of the sheriff's office alive? It all certainly seemed fishy to me. Almost like the Kevin Hackey interview Poole had conducted earlier in his career where Hackey tells of Wright knowing about the murder of Bobby Finch just three minutes after it happened. Hackey called Reggie to give him some of the news. Hackey called Reggie to give him the news, and Reggie already knew. Hackey said, how do you know about this? It just happened three or four minutes ago. In the case of Bobby Finch, either Wright had a tremendous information at work, or he was behind the murder. Here again, Wright either has a tremendous network or he has something to do with this. My mind was racing. I remembered that the corrupt Compton Police Department had been absorbed into the Sheriff's Department instead of being disbanded, and that corruption had festered and expanded. I thought about the inside information that Russell and I had learned that an off-duty sheriff had let the shooters into the nightclub on August the 24th of 2014, the night Suge Knight was shot and had driven them to uh, to LAX the next day. There was a time when I was distrusting of everybody in law enforcement, and I was sure that I needed to leave town. Wright's intimidation, Wright's intimation was that anyone that continues to investigate him is going to end up dead. Some of what Wright had to say was right on the money. Some of what he was saying was misinformation. Russell Poole was not meeting with Suge Knight. Russell was not meeting with the female investigator that Reggie Wright Jr. referenced. 
he was talking to the sheriffs about the Tupac and Biggie murders, trying to get an investigator within the department interested in looking into these murders. The sheriff's investigator had contacted Russell the day before the meeting to get a general sense of what the subject matter, and Russell told him about that an off-duty sheriff had been caught on videotape opening the door for the two shooters at the One Oak nightclub in West Hollywood, and that the same sheriff had been caught on videotape dropping the shooters off at LAX. The investigator was surprised that Russell had obtained the information, and according to Russell, he confirmed that the information was true. What made Russell think that the sheriffs were the logical choice was the fact that they control Suge Knight and that they have two very challenging cases, one where Suge was the victim and one where Suge Suge is the suspect. The odds of a successful prosecution of Suge Knight in light of all the evidence that we have is slim at best. Information about bungling the investigations of both of those crimes is going to come to light, especially with attorney Tom Mesro on Suge Knight's defense team. Russell then said, Look, you have two dog cases that are going to cause the department embarrassment, and you have the two biggest mysteries in music history that could make the department shine. Why not cut a deal with Suge now that you have influence over him? and get him to cooperate with bringing the killers of Tupac and Biggie to justice. After the telephone call, Russell called me and relayed all the information to me. He was genuinely excited about going to the meeting uh, the following morning because he felt there was a chance there was going to be movement in the case. What Reggie Wright Jr. is right about is the jurisdiction issues that were discussed, and I only learned that yesterday. August 20th, 2015, when I received a telephone call from the investigator and Jim McDonald. Both of them called me to offer condolences and to let me know what had happened. Apparently, at the end of the meeting, Russell had begun to feel distressed and paramedics were called. They did everything they could for him, but he passed away. Think about all the safest places to have a heart attack. I would rate Sheriff Headquarters as the second safest place because there are so many people around that are all trained in CPR. There's no way that Russell should have died on the 19th at Sheriff Headquarters of a heart attack. He should have survived, but that isn't the case as we all know. The call from Jim and the investigator was very heartfelt and I appreciated it tremendously. We had a 10 minute call I made it clear that I'm a civilian and that I did not expect them to share with me anything they are doing or not doing on an investigation. The investigator brought up the jurisdiction issues that Reggie Wright Jr. talked about on his bomb first interview in almost the same way. I asked the investigator why Reggie Wright Jr. had sensitive information about the cases just minutes after the meeting happened. He told me, that information had to have come from Russell as he was probably talking to everybody about this. I called bullshit. I told him that Russell and I made a pact not to discuss this with anyone and that there must be a leak in the department. Russell was adamant that in order to actually let investigators do their jobs, there had to be a willingness to investigate, and we needed to give those investigators every opportunity of success, so there was clearly no leak from Russell. So there are still unanswered questions about this, and as always, we only want the truth wherever that leads. How does Reggie know intimate details about what goes inside of the Sheriff's Department HQ? I can probably guess as his father and many of the officers Wright has known since he was a child were absorbed into the sheriffs, that this gives him many information sources. He could have heard about it minutes after the meeting, or he could have heard about it after the investigator talked to Russell the day before. We're living in a different era, as Lee Baca has told me. Nobody is working anymore. They're all on their cell phones. Social media, texting, voice messaging has changed the game. The investigator could have immediately called right, or it could be innocent, and he could have conveyed 
that pool was coming into a colleague who shares it with someone that shares it with someone until somebody called Wright. Sheriff Sherman Block did some great things for the community and the sheriff's department. He set up youth programs that continue until this day. Lee Baca expanded those programs. They give the sheriffs a deep reach into the community to avert problems before they happen and to deal quickly with problems when they do occur because of that reach. Jim McDonald now sits in leadership over the sheriffs and he understands the importance of this department's connection with the youth. He encourages his officers to talk to the youth and simply ask them how they are doing, to let them know that somebody cares about them. And as he said on the 22nd when he spoke to Leadership LA alumni, it doesn't cost a dime, and it may be the only person this year who shows they care. Lee Baca pointed out to me, in all the years of the African-American community doing demonstrations against the police. There's never been a demonstration against the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. He credits the youth programs. And sadly, as a sidebar, that's no longer true. I once ran a company with 100 employees. There were 100 headaches. You multiply that by 18,000 and you begin to understand the tremendous responsibility Sherman Block, Lee Baca, and Jim McDonald have shouldered. While Baca was at the Sheriff's Department, he expanded the responsibilities to include the MPTA community colleges, and McDonald walked into the second largest police force in the nation right behind NYPD. Russell's father was a sheriff. Lee Baca gave the eulogy at Russell's father's funeral less than six months ago. Russell was excited there would be traction in this case, he had a vision for solving it. That vision did include Suge Knight, but not as Reggie Wright, uh, misrepresented that Russell had been meeting with Suge. Suge is under a protective order and cannot have meetings with civilians. So there was no way Russell could have met with Suge. No, Russell's vision for solving the case hinged upon the integrity of the major- majority of Los Angeles County Sheriff's who are hardworking, honest people that put their lives on the line every day. Russell previously worked with Jimmy McDonald when they were both at LAPD, and he had a tremendous respect for McDonald. He knew that McDonald was going to root out the corruption that exists within the sheriffs. With 18,000 employees, there's no way to control every single employee who to, to takes an extra 50 or $100 bill from a bust. But there are standards to apply that give the sheriffs a whole new opportunity to be seen and a whole lot different than they've been seen before. And McDonald is setting the bar high. He chose not to clean house when he arrived so that any whose enthusiasm had reigned would have an opportunity to get their heads back into the game. His $3.2 billion budget seems like a lot, but when you think about the facilities, vehicles, and personnel, it doesn't take long to soak up that budget. So McDonald must find solutions to problems that don't require money. Getting his 18,000 employees' heads all in the game will multiply his reach within the department, but will also multiply his reach into Los Angeles. Russell, the man that investigated the Rampart scandal and made the LAPD police corruption public, believed in his vision. He believed sheriffs are the right place to solve this case, and in spite of the jurisdiction issues, he believed they should be handed the baton. He believed in Sheriff Jim McDonald. That's why he was at the Sheriff's Department headquarters taking a meeting with a homicide investigator. I share Russell's vision for the case and his support of the Sheriff's Department. Can I say for certainty that someone there didn't give him something tainted? No, I can't. But I can also say that even though Russell was hiking six miles a day and he was overeating, and upon occasion I'd partaken in a few too many alcoholic beverages with him, he was starting to make life changes and he had just begun to eat better, drink less, and I noticed a new excitement in his voice. Some of those changes may have been changing his body chemistry to where he needed to adjust his blood pressure medication. 
Keep in mind, he was planning on seeing the doctor the next day. I sent a message to Sheriff Jim McDonnell, thanking him for his telephone call yesterday and saying how much it meant to me that he personally reached out. I also said, Russell's ghost will haunt the new HQ to root out any and all corruption. He's now your partner from the other side. So there was Russell working on a case, doing what he loved. The new sheriff's facility only opened a short time before Russell walked through those doors, armed with information that he felt would solve the case. He was bringing resolution to something that had eaten him, had eaten at him for 19 years. In the heat of the battle, this Knight of Malta was taken on the field of battle. He lived a life of honor. He died a hero's death and at the most important law enforcement facility in Los Angeles. This was a magnificent death for an American patriot who added his blood to the millions of others that have contributed to building a more perfect union. Goodbye, friend. I will miss you. Now, at the time we had been meeting with, um, uh, you know, and talking to sheriff's investigators, uh, we had also been talking to one of Suge's attorneys, and I ended up having lunch with two of Suge's attorneys after Russell's death. And they confirmed that the information that we'd given them, they confirmed first to me and then to Russell separately. He wrote a statement about it, that it was true. And then a few years later, I was actually able to speak to the only eyewitness in the shooting in Las Vegas that's still living. And he told me what happened. And Russell was right. Russell got it right. And I appreciate you guys listening. Thank you. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking pot watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to it. I'm quite sure if they, 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 they saw the first one, they would saw the second one. Because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. Freudian slip. You got a lot to cover up.